If you want to know how to use the Lumix XLR interface, then you are in the right place because in this video, we're going to show all the different knobs and switches on the DMW XLR1 do and how you can use it with your Lumix camera. I'm going to be showing it with the Lumix S52X. And the first thing that's important to do is get on the back of the unit and make sure that the switch is flipped to unlock. And then all you have to do is slide it directly onto the hot shoe of your camera and then you flip the switch over into the lock position. Then you'll know that it's working because the power light will turn on green whenever your camera is on. One other thing to note, be careful with these pins when you're not using the interface because these pins are what actually send all the sound from the audio interface directly into the camera. So you don't wanna damage these because they do all the digital connection. Let's look at all the parts of the XLR interface. You do get a cold shoe on the top, which you can use to mount a shotgun microphone or something else too. It's reinforced with metal, but the whole body of this is actually plastic, so I would be careful with how much weight you put on top of the XLR interface. Then on the side, you get input one and input two, and they both have the little XLR doors that you flip out of the way. These are just standard XLR jacks that can accept both line, mic, and phantom power inputs. And to change the different settings of your actual inputs, you just go to the side, and you have several different switches you can go through. When we start looking at all the switches on this, we actually wanna start with the middle. So the first switch that's the most important is the channel one, channel two switch. What this does is it changes if channel two actually gets the signal from input one or from input two. So if you're only using one microphone with this plugged directly into the mic one jack, then you wanna set this switch on the side to be input one, one. But if you're using two audio sources, then you actually wanna flip it down to input one dash two. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna separate the two channels instead so you can use two separate sources on the side of the interface. So usually I just use it with one mic, so I typically leave it set to one one. But sometimes I run it with a wireless mic and with an XLR mic, in which case you wanna switch it to one two. One other really cool thing to note whenever you use this with compatible cameras, it actually still allows you to use the jack on the side of your camera. So you can actually still record direct into this camera as well, and that records on channels three and four. So you actually get four channels of audio. One and two come from the XLR jacks, and then three and four come from the eighth inch jack on the side of the camera. If you wanna use the four channel mode, then you will need to get in on your menu and go down to audio two, go to four channel mic input, and then turn that on. And that will allow you to actually use the audio jack on the side of the camera as well, even while you're recording with the XLR on the top of the camera. One other setting that you can change between on the camera menu is you can go to the sound recording quality and you can go between 96 kilohertz, 24 bit, and 48 kilohertz 24 bit. My recommendation is just stick with the 48 kilohertz because it's gonna give you better backwards compatibility. Sometimes if you use 96 kilohertz and you use an incompatible video recorder like an Atomos Ninja, that can cause problems. So just stick with 48 kilohertz unless you know you need 96 to get that even higher quality and that all your downstream equipment can support it. The next switch that's also super important is the ALC switch, which that stands for automatic level control. And I typically run that off. If you have it set to on, then the camera is actually going to gauge what the different audio signals are that are coming in, and it will adjust the gain for you on its own, which can be nice if you're in a run and gun scenario and you don't have time to monitor your meters and fiddle with it. The thing that can be annoying is if the sound gets really loud and then really quiet, then your audio levels can be all over the place, which makes it harder to edit later. So I prefer to leave this off and to set my own audio levels. Now one other really important thing to note, when you have the channel one, two set to input one, one, you only have to worry about the volume knob for channel one. That will set the volume for both channel one and channel two. On the Sony XLR interface, it's actually different where you can adjust the two volumes independently. On this, they are always linked together, so you only have to worry about the volume knob on one when you use it in input one, one mode. The next switch to pay attention to is the line, mic, and plus 48 volt switch. And this just changes the sensitivity of the input and also enables phantom power. So if you're using a stronger audio source from a guitar multi-effect or a soundboard or something like that, you'll probably wanna set it to line. If you're using a standard mic or a dynamic microphone that has a lot of gain built in, then you wanna set it on mic. That just gives it a nice solid signal. You also wanna use mic if you don't want phantom power on. If you're using a mic that's sensitive to phantom power like a ribbon mic, definitely leave it in mic and not plus 48. And then you go to plus 48 volts if you're using a condenser microphone, a shotgun microphone, anything that requires 48 volts of power, then the audio interface is actually going to send that phantom power directly through your XLR cable. This also comes in handy for other mics that have signal boosters built in. So my mic that I'm using typically needs phantom power, so I usually leave that in the plus 48 volts. The next switch on the side is the gain switch. 
This switch also has a lot of power. There's three settings. There's zero, plus 20, and minus 20. And basically what this does is it either boosts or attenuates the signal coming into the preamp. So if you're getting a really hot signal and you're clipping already, then you need to go to the minus 20 setting on the side of it. If your signal's not giving you enough volume, then you need to go to the plus 20 decibel setting. And I recommend setting this switch before you set the volume switch because this is gonna drastically affect your volume. So do this switch next. I typically leave it set to zero because I'm typically talking to a camera directly like this inside. I don't usually have to worry too much about my sound being too loud. The next switch is the low cut switch. And I love the settings Panasonic gives you on this adapter. You either get off 16 Hertz or 160 Hertz. And what the low cut does is basically anything below that number, it's gonna automatically cut all those frequencies out. So this is really useful for eliminating any low end rumble from AC or other sounds inside or outside, wind noise, rustling, other things like that. So I typically leave it on the 16 Hertz setting because you really don't need the 16 Hertz setting when you're talking to a camera like I am right now. But if you're recording a full range audio track, you will wanna leave it on off. You may also wanna use the 160 Hertz setting if you're experiencing a lot of plosives, a lot of low end rumbling sounds from someone speaking. So that can just do a good job at cleaning up the audio a little bit more by using that setting. So once we've set our input sensitivity, our gain, and our low cut switch, we need to go to the audio level. And what's interesting about this, so if you turn it all the way to the left, that's actually off, and then as you turn it to the right, you're boosting the volume. So I typically like to start with this right at about halfway. And then I look at the meters on my camera and see what my audio signal coming in is and if we need to boost it or cut it a little to get the levels at about negative 12 or negative six, somewhere in that range. I really love the audio meters on the Panasonic cameras. They make it so easy to see exactly what your signal coming in is. So that's the left side. And then on the right side, we have all those same switches for input two. So those are all gonna be active if you're using input one, input two on the XLR interface. So there's all the different settings of the Panasonic DMW XLR1. This is a super useful piece of equipment that sounds great on any Lumix camera that's compatible with. And I have a full list of all the cameras this is compatible with in the description below. Personally, I'm using it with the S52X and love recording my sounds straight into the camera. It just makes it so much easier to get my editing done in post. If you have any other questions about this XLR interface, leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you want any of my recommended gear, my mics, my cameras, lenses, lights, I have all that in the description below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.